and see you over there. Welcome back, everybody. So. Hey. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. So, do me a favor. We're going to provide you an uh, accurate uh, install and review of this product if you return the favor. If you go ahead and hit the like button on this, that's cheesy as hell. Nature is not going to be my friend today. You. You snuck up on me there. Ah, you sneaky. How you guys doing today? Welcome back for another episode. So if you've made it to this video, you've made it here because of one of two reasons. The first one, either you're a subscriber to the channel, or second one, you're looking for a review on the product that we have here today. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to give you this install. We're going to give you this review, but you guys got to do a favor for us. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel. But today, we're going to get into the beans of what we've got for you guys. So before we dive right into the parts and stuff that we're looking at, today's topic is going to be all about storage. So especially in two-seater side-by-sides, obviously we'll have an X3 here today. That's what I possess and what I enjoy the most. Um, Two seat side by sides, you know, you, you have limited storage. So say you get your door bags and your roof bags and you, you know, your little stuff in there between you and a passenger, you know, room is very limited. So in the back side back here, as it comes factory, you've got your, you know, your entire bed and everything, which leaves for any type of, you know, attachments and stuff like that, that you may need for storage. <clears throat> but you don't have like a on the x3s you don't have a bed you don't have anything you could just throw in there for right now um, if you do any type of short riding or hard riding or long-term riding you know stuff like that you need storage you need storage for stuff for like tools because things can and will happen um, straps any type of recovery equipment you know big and small so we're going to discuss on a budget friendly option to accommodate this so let's dive right into it we're going to see what kimi moto sent us today shout out to kimi moto for hooking us up and helping us uh, provide you with this information you guys want to know what's inside this box because i want to know what's inside this box i know what's inside this box but I haven't looked inside of it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. I am seeing it just as you guys are seeing it here with me today. Let's bring out the goods. All of this right here that you're seeing right now is the everything that you would get in a package for the Kimimoto storage rack. So we're going to lay everything out real quick and then we'll start opening up. Um, showing you guys all the bits and the pieces when opening packages. If you have a sharp object, remember, use safety when on camera. What's up? 
Hey everybody, this is my handy helper right here. Reaps the benefits of all the hard work and all the great adventures. So we'll talk about all this stuff here for a minute and then we'll start putting it all back together. So we'll touch base, uh, going over all these parts. We've looked over the instructions and stuff. It's given that your initial install time is approximately one hour. So what we're gonna do is uh, just talk about the basis of everything. And then we are gonna put everything together. We're gonna do a time lapse of everything. And, and if there's any main points, stuff that we find about the install that we need to stop and talk about, we'll throw it in the video. Uh, I will talk about this rack. I'll touch base on it real quick. So if you have, say, the Can-Am product lineup, they really utilize what they call the link cue system. Basically locks in place. So if you were to, say, your coolers or storage box or whatever you've got, fit it down in the hole, hit the tab, and then boom. So a lot of the products, even aftermarket, BRP, or anything like that that sells for, say, the uh, Can-Am lineup comes with a link queue system, or you can buy the link queue pieces and add it yourself. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. But for right now, we're going to dive right into this install. We're going to get it good and done. Like I said, if we have any points that we need to mention, we'll stop and throw it in this video. <laughs> right here one of the first ones that you're going to come to doing the install you have o-rings to come together in the kit and then there's a little sleeve comes inside it's got rotation it recommends that you grease these this is a fine point because this right here if you get mud and, and stuff trapped inside of it it is going to squeak a lot as far as grease i think like a good light coat of say like a me preferably a, a all-weather grease maybe stuff you would use i think lucas sells you know stuff that you could put on say your boat uh your bearings and stuff for your boat trailers and all that won't get washed out so little small minor stuff like this that's what i would use so just as a recommendation point that out if you do not do that you will more than likely run into an issue in the future of just squeakiness from the rotation and such. So just wanted to stop and point that out. Now we're gonna continue. say something real quick about paying attention to the instructions uh, they're not extremely detailed uh, one thing I will point out is, is they do provide a bunch of washers but they don't in the instructions and the pictures I don't see any uh, depiction of them using washers so I would advise using washers whenever they are available and you can another thing is is on the very front page is where you will find the install instructions for this unit now we made it through to I think about the third page of where we were needing to mount this to that and we were trying to figure out at what point was all of this supposed to be mounted together. This is uh, a total of four, three pieces. So this top piece is one, has a bolt that goes here and here and here and here and then your two bolts here uh, to bring the bottom two pieces together. Uh, that is on the very front page. It is very simple. Um, so yes, when you get to that point and you're like, well, where's the instructions to put all this together? You get a little confused. 
Look on the front page. That's where that's at. Bolts, uh, bolts are directional too. Bolts are directional on those. Uh, you will seat the bolt down into the figure hole on the pieces that overlap. <clears throat> you won't need a washer to go down in there because it won't fit. Uh, you will put a washer on the outside where the nut goes. And they do have torque specs if you want to be super picky about your torque specs. But uh, I measure mine in Ugga Duggas. So far, we're, we're dialed in today. But... and stuff assembled as far as your tray top your rack top or whatever and then your other pieces pulled together so you have nut and bolt goes here on this bracket another one here here and same thing vice versa here here and here um, we looked we wasn't really able to use washers on any of the bolts that come through the top it has an indention for it but the washers wouldn't seat properly um so we took them back out they're fine it seems fine the plastic's thick enough uh, it doesn't depict in their instructions or anything about using washers on that side it doesn't depict anything about using washers on this side either but we put washers on there so we're complete with this process i don't know if there's going to be any fine adjustments you know, of like massaging it and making it fit uh, because everything is kind of slotted here in all the points that you've bolted down. So it may come to a point that we have to loosen those up and kind of massage everything around or maybe not. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on to the next step of the process. We went ahead and mounted up what would be your mounting points for the rack. So you got these two right here on the corners which will be towards the back of the machine. And then these guys right here, which will mount to the cage and the top. Now we have left our bolts that connect this to the rack itself. We've left them a little bit loose uh, because you will be needing a little bit of adjustability. Uh, we haven't mounted it yet. So what I wanted to do was mount it and it gives us that wiggle room to move back and forth uh, to get the perfect fit or as best that we can. And then once we do that, then I'll go back through and tighten the bolts and make sure that they are all um, secure and solid. Now this guy right here mounts to the tubing. We're probably gonna have to readjust the reservoir for the rear shocks. And we'll, we'll show you in more detail how this works and how it mounts. Put it over the length Q pieces and then probably have to loosen them up, get them fine-tuned in there, but get them to where that they, they latch into place. So we'll show you all that. We'll go over everything, uh, but we're going to start on the next step. Right now, I'm at the part that I need to take my shocks. I'm going to take mine off. In the instructions, it shows you to take them loose and move them. Uh, originally, whenever we bought the machine, we changed some stuff around. We flipped the shocks, changed the position of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take them off for right now. Now, this is the piece that the link Q system mounts into. You have the ability, they have a uh, nylon lock washers up in there, but you can don't need a wrench to tighten everything down. They already have the free cuts inside of them. So you just slip the nut down in there and give her the beans when you're ready to tighten it up. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come over here and start Start in on mounting these. 
to the roll cage. Slap a nut in there, get my impact. Get my first one started. And then it'll just hold that in place for right now. I'm not going to tighten all these down yet. Same as with the bolts and stuff on the rack. I'm going to make sure everything fits perfect. And then I'm going to start going around and tightening everything. We got everything prepared for the next step of the process. We went ahead to make everything easier. And took the roof off so we can get to our bolt holes. Uh, the top pieces is supposed to bolt on these brackets. You got two bolts on the top and two bolts that will go in on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and get these lined up and then we'll go to the next step on tightening everything down once we get it test fitted. So one issue we stopped uh, during the install is, is our sound bar, where our sound bar is mounted. Um, you let this down, it makes it into coming into contact, the bars do. So with the so rack, we've got, we went ahead and rotated the sound bar forward. I'm um, going to try to fine tune, adjust that, and fix my net and everything that's right there with it. Um, then the next step, we secured the two top brackets that go over the top up here and put our eight bolts in and tighten those down. Then the next step of the process, we came down to where our clamps was. I lined those up with our Q-links, link Q's. Uh, tighten those down, then lined it up to where they would lock into place on both sides, and then tighten our two bolts up here, and then our other two bolts that are located on right here, and did the same thing for the other side, and then come down after everything was tightened up, verified fitment. Made sure that these guys right here would lock into place, in which they do. And so now the next step, we are going to mount our shocks, figure out where they go. Then after that, we should be able to see where we're going to put our reservoirs. And then get everything complete and everything finished up. So our next step is our next step is mounting our bracket for where the shock goes. There is a little bracket it's located right up and under here that slides under there. It's got threads in it and then you've got your L bracket which will mount to the top. We got some laid out over here. These, this is the little piece that slides under. It's got threads on it. Slide it in, then your L bracket will mount inwards. Then your bolts will go through all those holes and tighten everything down on this part. We made it to this point. We have the rack mounted up and secured. Everything is tight. Uh, we ran into a small little issue with the little brackets right here. These guys. So the little nut that's welded on the bottom of them, there's not a whole lot of threads. And once you go to torque these down, they'll start eating the threads up. So what we end up having to do, and if I ever had to do this, I would just go ahead and do that again. Reuse their L bracket and just drill those holes out and put some rib nuts in there. Let's see if I can zoom in there. We did some rib nuts on this side. So right now, don't have our reservoirs mounted up. We're gonna put the roof back on. Got that one, get this one. Ta-da! And then if you wanted to bring it back down, you could if you wanted to. So pull it down, we'll lock it down. It's 
see how easy it is. Now, of course, if you had some weight up here, like a tire or storage rack or something, it the it you wouldn't be as much resistance coming down, uh, but the shocks would help to pick it up and hold it up. So what, what I'm going to do right now is throw my roof on, uh, put my shock reservoirs, show you what fitment looks like on all those with all the options that I currently have. All right, we're at the final point of it. We're finally done. We've got everything installed, nuts, bolts. Everything's tight. Everything's good to go. Um, overall, the uh, hour quoted time to install. If you are somebody who does this, you know, you're in a shop, you can run through it very quickly. You know, you already know what it is, what you're supposed to get, how it goes together. Hour install time? Yes, possibly. But as far as being somebody doing it their first try, uh, ciphering the instructions, putting it all together, uh, it's going to take you a little bit. It's taken us a little while to figure out everything, get everything lined up and adjusted with the way everything's set up. So if you had a Can-Am that, you know, didn't have these reservoirs here, that wouldn't be a problem that you have to worry about. Uh, if you had, if you didn't have a sound bar, if you didn't have a back net, if you didn't have any of that stuff, you know, it would be a faster process. But this is for somebody that's already got accessories, you know, real world fitment with this, with that. Uh, We've got the sound bar and everything finished up. The netting's back. Um, on our reservoirs, we did run into a small little issue. We're gonna try to find a more permanent option, but we've got the these hoses. If they're not tied back in some way, shape, or form, then they fold over into the center. But the only real modification that we've had to make to the machine itself is when we had to do the the rib nuts for the the little bracket and honestly uh the brackets are a cool concept uh maybe that's something that they could fix in the future but i automatically if i ever had to do one of these again boom i just go ahead poke those holes out put those rib nuts in that's one less piece that you have to worry about you go to take it apart and drop it look for it so with the ease of use you know getting everything down There you go. You know, if you've got, say, a cooler or storage something. You know, with it down, I've got my cooler in place. You know, right here. I've still got a little room that I can open it. Still reach in here, pull something out. You know, if it was a big storage box, then obviously you can let this go up. And you know, just quick reference, the cool part about the uh, quick latch system that they got going on is I can throw it up here. Something's going on, I need to move it out of my way. All I gotta do is get my latches in Get them nice and secured. They're new, so they, they take a little bit to get worn in. Then, you know, if you're working on something back here, you need it, just go ahead. Bada bing. So, to end this one out, do I recommend this product? Absolutely. If you're somebody who keeps storage, or needs more options to store things outside of the cab, yes, I do recommend it. Uh, the biggest downside that I see to something like this is maybe making something more top heavy, you know, raising more weight. But if you like to do long distances, harder trails and stuff, uh, need to carry a spare tire, got hooks and stuff on here to carry the spare tire, uh, 10 of 10, I recommend it. It's a cheap alternative for a budget builder. But enough of that. We're going to cut this off. 
we've got another episode uh, that we're going to be releasing involving storage uh, which relates to this so keep posted for that second video again thank you to Kimimoto thanks to you guys for watching please hit the like button subscribe and drop a comment below what you think about our video peace out Thank you.